focus. I have to listen. I have to listen. I'm... I'm behind. If they find us like this, I think... We okay. Won't be able to try again. Oh, that was a left. Never mind. I think what I most hate is that he lies to you. Like, if it was just a matter of following the sounds, because he was always the sounds... You're not supposed to get trigger happy until... F You're not supposed to get trigger happy like I am until 4 a.m. But I'm just so done. I'm so done. And I'm burpy. Good. You must help us. I'm... You must, you must Why is it cut out like that? Maybe I can't do... Maybe I can't do my... Oh! <sighs> Alright. No more tries. I'm done. I, I'm done. It is time for my end of the game talk. And there's gonna be some fancy editing. Why I feel like announcing it to you, I don't know, but... All right, let, let's let's talk. Let's let's talk for a bit about Five Nights at Freddy's as a series. As I'm gonna prop my chair up a little bit, as a series, as a whole. Let's just sit down and talk about it. So, Five Nights at Freddy's was what I would say the first real horror game that I played. I feel like using my other hand, but it's just because his hand's propped up on the desk, and I don't know if you can hear it. I'm not using the microphone right now, just because I want to use this, just quicker setup and everything. Um, oh, yeah, what effort does it take? Huh. Take this, plug it in, call it a day, right? But I, I didn't feel like it, so. I And I like the headset, okay? I'm going to be honest, I, I like the headset. But! I've... I, okay, so the first, if you want to get technical, the first horror game I may have, I played was Bioshock, but I don't really count Bioshock, because it's not, it's scary, but it's not horror for the sake of horror. I played Dead Space, but I want to say I started playing Dead Space at the same time I started playing the first Five Nights at Freddy's, and I, it was fun, but it wasn't, the lasting impressions weren't of what it did right, it's of what it did wrong. And it relied too much on action. And nothing was subtle. So that's why I count Five Nights at Freddy's 2 as the first real horror game that I played. And I loved it, okay? Like, I love the atmosphere, the environment, the sound, the design, the animatronics. But most importantly, I love the storytelling and the lore of it. Sure, I may not be, like, as smart as, like... All these other YouTubers and guys and theorizers who sit down and look at intricate little details, but I like to think I've picked up on a lot of stuff. And I don't I don't want to sit here and like parrot what they have said and I've watched a ton of videos on it. But I always found them super interesting. Just how this game reveals almost not not this game, not this one, just all of them. They reveal almost nothing. But they tell the world. And they tell the world in a way that you're not sure how it's going. I love how it all comes together. I love the concept, the ideas of this is a, this is a story about a twisted murderer. And the spirit's trying to take vengeance, but not knowing who it is and taking vengeance on anyone. I feel like I'm about to sneeze. But, oh, it doesn't help that my shoulder is like all like woolly and stuff. It's just so nice. But, it's just, uh, I just completely lost my train of thought. I love everything about this series. It is so beautiful and so great. And I love what it stands for and its simplicity in so many different ways. And I don't know if I'll ever meet Scott or if the Mr. Scott Cawthon, Cawthon, how it's pronounced, Mr. Scott, if I will ever meet him. I don't know. I don't know if he'll ever even see this video. I don't know if anyone will ever see this video, but that's why I love doing it. But that's, that's a discussion for another time. But... I want to say thank you for impacting me in this great way of like introducing me to horror. By the time this gets published, Fatal Frame 2 Crimson Butterfly will probably be out and about and published and well into it too. And I loved it. I loved it so much. And um, with my friend Sullivan that I was recording that with, the, the guy who swears a lot if you haven't guessed, but you know, love him to death anyway. 
on his channel we did fatal frame made in a black water and i loved it it was so like sure maybe it wasn't as scary because of like the atmosphere or whatever but i loved what it was and i loved what it stood for and i loved what this stood for horror done right and i never really got into horror games or horror movies as a matter of fact because i never liked being scared if i was to be scared i wanted to know there was something i could do about it dark souls and bioshock are scary games although maybe dark souls not as much but some scary stuff happens there but you can proactively do something about it now let's take five nights at freddy's you can't do anything about it and there's other horror games that do this too the amnesia series and silent hill all of which i now really want to play and this desire to like take a challenge like this head on this fear and to beat it is because of five nights at freddy's which is why i consider it like which is why as i said i consider it the first real horror game i played i I could go on and on, just be like how much I love it, and I'd be repeating myself by saying like, oh, the story, the design, the creepiness, and how simple it is, but there's one thing that stops me, that stops me from loving this these series even more, and it's the gameplay. I've heard this series described not so much as a horror game, but as an endurance test of stress and anger management all while praying to RN Jesus. Because every single game is a random number generator nightmare. I remember in the first game, it was like, oh, yo, you gotta check, you gotta check. Oh, Bonnie decided to camp for like a solid hour. A solid hour, Bonnie just camped. And I knew the moment you put it down, you're dead. And then while that's going on, like fo I'm constantly trying to check on Foxy. Sometimes Foxy's aggressive. Sometimes he's not. There was, there was some solid. There's solid preventative measures. There is a solid preventative measure. Close the door. Just close the door, and you're good. But the frequency in which you had to do so, the frequency, and if they play noises or if they didn't, and, and the randomness in it. Let's take the second game. So. Okay, so these guys come and what do you do? The moment you see them in the vents or the moment you see them in, or the moment they come close and starts flashing, put on the mask. You're good. Solid way to protect yourself. But sometimes you had no time to do it. Sometimes they just pull down the camera and kill you and you couldn't do anything about it. And I remember times being like super fast, but still this like, alright, oh there he is. Like not even a quarter of a second, just on the mask. And not fast enough. The only constant was the puppet. And similar to why I said I loved Foxy so much, because Foxy is the oncoming, in every game, with, well, let me get back to that. Foxy in every single game is the oncoming storm. The guy who you can't stop. If you, technically, in every single game, if you just sit there and do nothing, either, like in the first game, if you just sit there and do nothing, you win. If In the second game, if you just put on the mask, you win. In the third game, if you just look at the door, you win. Now, the fourth game, I will count as an exception. The fifth game is also an exception. But generally speaking, Foxy is always the oncoming storm. In the third game, you could argue that Foxy is not as much because he's essentially, if you just look to the left, he's there. And sometimes he's not, so you just don't look at him. But either way, he has the same concept, which is why he's my favorite. I forget where I was getting with that. But there's, there's things you can do that's solid. But it's all random and how much they attack. And random jo number generators are so important. They are so important. But your skill in a game and your victory should not be dubbed because of random number generators. Like, excuse me. I'm going to keep bringing up Dark Souls. I'm just going to keep bringing it up. I can get really good at killing a certain enemy. But it'll still act randomly sure i may be able to predict okay so if i slash he's gonna he's gonna block but maybe he'll roll maybe he'll attack maybe he'll just take the hit maybe he'll be stupid you know you never know you never know for sure although you can generally predict you never know that's why it's so important and this game is a slave it is literal literally rn jesus's hell if if rn jesus is gonna send someone to hell he has them play these games, which sounds weird. Can you imagine being locked in a room and being told, like, 
we'll you know we provide food like food water everything whatever this is prison though and you can't leave until you fully beaten these games that would be nightmarish even more nightmarish than the games themselves because it's no longer about me being able to skillfully take on an enemy like in dark souls which is what i was getting to at that point i can skillfully it's not because oh they decided to be super aggressive it's because of my skill in defeating it, and you can be proactive. Now let's take, let's take Five Nights at Freddy's. Let's take Cisco Vacation. Just random. It's just random. You never know. I remember playing. I remember winning night. Oh, what what was it? I think it was the second or third game that the fifth night was easier than the third. That the fifth night I was just like done. Did it? I forget which one, but it was one of those games. It was one game. I one game. I think it may have also been the fourth game that I was like Golden Freddy. Oh my goodness, what's going on? And like the first few times he got me, and then I realized, oh, you yeah, shine your flashlight on him. And it was easy. It was easy. It was skill. Well, nah, maybe not. Nah, maybe not. But it was an easier problem to deal with than as opposed to stopping, listening for breathing, closing, listening for doorsteps, uh, listening for do footsteps, footsteps from the door. You know what I mean? It was easy. And then you get to. And then you get to other. Okay, so it was actually a squeak from outside, but I swear to goodness, it was a squeak in the game. And I was like, oh crap. I wonder if they'll jump scare me. Screw it. If they do, I don't mind. I don't mind. I kind of want the giant fan to kill me. <laughs> Just be like, giant fan. But anyway, giant fan with a mouse in the middle of it. But anyway, what was I saying? You aren't rewarded for skill you're rewarded for attention to detail details that lie to you let's be 100 percent honest in five nights of freddy's one there is a chance that if you just guess and at closing and opening the doors you never have to use the lights and you never have to use the camera sure you could argue but won't foxy attack you all the time but maybe he won't be aggressive you could just sit there and go you could do it you could do it. It's just, you're rewarded for luck. Not for skill. For luck. And that drives me nuts. I want to be rewarded knowing that I have improved. And that I am better. Sure, maybe I grinded for some levels. But I was the ultimate driving force. Not just, oh, now, now you happen to get it right. And that's why I simultaneously love and hate these games. Let me let me just let me just you know puke on you guys a little bit more. I love the story. I love the I love the characters. I love how it all plays out. How it tells the story, the atmosphere, the sounds, the music, everything. I love everything. But then, gameplay walks in the room. Gameplay comes and joins the party. What makes a game a game? And it just kills me. It's why I have I have a very hard time playing this game for more than an hour at a time. And, like, I've been doing this, as I said, like, every other day or so, every day or every other day or so, just trying and trying and trying. And I just couldn't get it. Alright? And, 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 it's, I don't want to say this game beat me. Orange Jesus beat me. 100%. Because I think if it came down to, like, every time he makes a sound, you, he, like, you're, that he's there, 100%. Or ev like every time he makes a sound, either he's there, he's getting closer, or he moves, or he leaves, and it never lied. I know I could do it. I, I would encourage it to go faster. I'd be like, oh, I'm here, 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 here. If I knew it never lied, I'd be good. But because it lies, and it lies randomly, and it moves randomly, like I can't tell. You okay, so like I, I swear to you, every single game with the exception of that one, I must. There must have been a super quiet noise while I was saying something. And hey, I'll admit that, alright? I'll admit that. Every other time. Actually, hold on, it's not true. So the first few times after the first session of trying to get it, I got to like three or four. But then it started being super consistent. I always got well into five. And then I ran out of power. And that's what killed me. Just running out of power. Because the power drains like crazy. Like 100% crazy. And... Sure, you could argue, well, if you have infinite power, you just close all three doors. Yeah, I know, so I can't really argue, oh, if I just had more power. But, no power. 
but I just I you when you play this game you're praying to RN Jesus and I don't like that it's not fun and I don't feel rewarded I just feel in pain so I'm not gonna do it I'm not and unless the entire world and everyone just gets up and says max we need you to beat beat the sixth or fifth fifth bonus extra secret ending whatever you want to call it uh, to beat that ending we need you to go back and to beat the hardest custom night or the sixth night on every single other five nights of Freddy's game i'm not gonna do it and when and when a new game comes and i'm sure one is already being made and hey you know if one is never made all right but if one is made excuse me if one is made I'm not gonna play on this channel unless once again the world gets up on their feet and tells me to not to say oh Max can be Max can be bullied around but it's like unless this is what you guys truly want I'm not gonna do it I'll play it on my own time I'll play it with friends I'll I'll make a ball of it you know they'll have chips and dips and booze well, maybe not booze, but, you know, you, you get the idea. Just, we'll make it a fun time. We'll make it a party. But I'm not going to do it for YouTube anymore, because it's not fun. Um, I heard a custom night is supposed to come up on this game. Maybe I'll do a little bonus episode just to show you guys what it is. Or maybe I just won't, and I'll just let it go. Let it go. Nothing holding me back anymore. So, I'm sorry if I disappointed you guys. I'm I'm gonna YouTube what happens in the secret ending. All right, I'm, I'll tell you that right now. I'm gonna YouTube what happens in the secret ending, and I encourage you guys to either do the same or play the game yourself because this game is so much fun. There's so much, there's so many good things. Well, let's me talk about the series. Let's talk about this game in particular. All right, let's talk about this game in particular. Now that you know my opinion, you know that I love the series to no end, but I hate the gameplay with a passion because of RNG. Jesus. I love that this game focused on the story. I like how it constantly threw you into new and different mini games, but each one was more stupid, and well, nah, I shouldn't say stupid. Was more convoluted and RNG to see than the next. The one exception was the first night. So I actually looked up what happens if you die in the first night. Um, the future me, play it, play the jump scare. I think that thing's called a bid bab. A bid bab kills you. And you, you guys saw what I did. My first instinct was they gave me one control and it closes the door and I just held it and I won. Let, let's take the next challenge. Going through Bologna. That's just red light, green light. That's all it was. Let's go. Uh, what about the next challenge? You, you had to like turn on, the, uh, turn on the lights back and forth. That was just painful. And it was just how far can you push it until you have to play it, play, play, play. How far can you push it? All right, let's take the next one. We have to go through Foxy's area. Once again, red light, green light. This is red light, green light. Then it's Simon Says when you're taking apart Freddy. Then it's that super irritating hand puppet Bonnie. Where what, what did you have to do? You had to essentially sneak up on him and hit the button. And I don't know why. I don't know what is with this mouse. But this mouse feels super unresponsive and super slow. And I know my mouse isn't like that. But when I play this game, it just feels like it is. So maybe it's because I'm nervous. I don't know and I'll admit it. Okay? I will totally admit it. Maybe I'm just dumb maybe i am just slow okay i'll admit it but i don't think it's that i really don't think it is at all because i looked up tips and tricks and everyone's like it's super easy it's not and it's just sucking my soul out i want to play pokemon i want to play dark souls i want to play games that are fun and games that reward you for skill you guys know me i love challenge i love difficulty I love the sense of achievement, but this is just, it's just not fun. It really isn't. What else? What else? You go through Foxy again, and then that, and then you go, oh yeah, you go through Foxy, Foxy kills you, which, hey, clever. And then they put you in, I actually thought about this while playing, they actually put you in the scooping room, to be 100% honest, because they, you hear the noises and you hear them being played, and then you see, um, you see Ballora getting like, jostled and kind of ripped apart a little bit it almost looks like so i'm guessing that's a scooby machine which how the scooby machine just has like this square little base and it just goes like Hup -hup! how that pulls out your skeleton i don't know maybe it's like maybe it's like this spot that's like it magnetizes holes to it and it's just like all right ready Hup -hup! but that that's bad design but it adds to the story it adds to why they're crazy 
or why they want revenge, you know? So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna blame Scott saying like that's stupid, but it's just like that's a really I don't like that design, but details, details, that's just me because I still appreciate and love for what it is. That mini game was so irritating. The one thing I would praise that mini game on is that it was constant. It was never random. Although the guys came up were random, it was still at a constant. There was still a constant goal and there's still an obvious reason of why you lost either they got to the top which you can see happen or the dial did one of the dials did a full revolution it was super hard and i heard that apparently there's this patch that was released in like the first few days that made that game e that made that night easier i can't imagine that that would be terrible and i praise whoever did it because it certainly wasn't me at all. I procrastinated with this game. And I'll 100% admit that. Okay, so then what? So they got you out. And then they came to this night. And you sneak through the room, which there's no trouble. And then you play Simon Says again. And then you play Five Nights at Freddy's 1. Except it lies to you and it's on steroids and you run out of power. Because apparently you have to have TVs on in the room. Which look like they're the house from Five Nights at Freddy's 4. Which suggests, are you the parent of that child? Or... Are you the one who caused him to die? Or is he really dead? Or is he just... You don't know. So, that's where we are now. It's 100% I'm going to yawn. <sighs> Hope you guys didn't do a close-up of my... <sighs> I'm kidding. Um, there's so much to love. I love how it focuses on the story. And I love how it seems to be... There like assist like um for some reason when whoever made these animatronics got ne like a uh, one girl got near the robot it killed her but why i i could list off theories people have but i don't want to say anything did my phone just vibrate screw your phone but i just i like it I like it a lot, but you don't get used to any concepts. That's what I don't like. You sort of get used to Bologna, and you sort of get used to Foxy, but it's just red light, green light. There's not much to get used to. It's just, a lot of this game is literally just red light, green light, and Simon Says. Actually, yeah. Every single game is red light, green light, or Simon Says, with the exception being Bologna, no, sorry, with the exception being the puppets, or the marionettes, or whatever they're called, the puppets, and the final, entered, entered, whatever his name is. Yeah, it, it said in the, it said in the one menu, entered, so yeah, it's, it's entered. So I like it a lot, okay? I really do. But I just can't do it anymore. So, we're done here. Please don't hold your breath for a new one, unless you guys rapidly... Everyone gets on their feet and tells me to, which I probably won't. I will be playing more horror games, cause I, like I'm I'm super excited. I don't know which ones I'm gonna play, but either on my ah fun, either on my own time or not, I'm super excited to play more horror games, and I will. And wow, my phone will not shut up. It's on silent, and I guess I should also said to not vibrate, but this was the point. I will be playing more games, and, and more horror games. And I just want to once again say thank you to Scott for this because I truly enjoyed it. I really enjoyed this series as a whole and it will always hold a special place in my heart. However, I do not like praying to Iron Jesus. It's not fun. And I hope in the future games, I hope in the future games, Scott, if you ever see this, reward people for skill, not for random chance. But for skill. Also, make it so it's not entirely your mouse. Make it so there's ways to use your keyboard more. Because that make, that'd make you a lot faster. But, yeah. I think we'll be done here. And I just feel a little burnt out, is all. Um, yeah, so we'll post this. We'll play more horror games. We'll do everything else. If you guys have a horror game you want me to play... If you guys have a horror game you want me to play, and um, 
I keep losing my train of thought. I'm sorry. If you guys have a horror game you want me to play, or if you just want to share your thoughts on this series as well, I know you can always make the joke that fanboys are, you know, rapid. Rabid, rabid, however you pronounce that, for this game. Yeah, and a lot of people are going to hate on me for what I say. That I hate the gameplay, but I love the game. This series will always hold a special place in my heart, and I will always remember it fondly. And then I'll remember the nightmares that it caused, and the pain and agony and the aggravation. So, I think we'll just call this good. Thanks for watching, everyone. Leave a like, comment below, and I'll see you then. Souls is taught me that whenever people have weird artifacts that they're like, here, just touch it. Nothing bad will happen. Something bad will happen. Whoa! How gentle and good, okay? This Pokédex is sassing me. Do not know what it's talking and it's blinking. So, little guy, let me brush back your ears. You satisfied? You happy? Good. Group hugs for everyone. Let's go play Pokemon.